Hello, and uh, my name is Cypher. Uh, I'm going to be doing a series of presentations and demonstrations on how I've gone about uh, designing panels for the SimPit. Uh, I'm going to be looking specifically uh, in this series the fuel panel of the A8B Harrier for the DCS. So, getting started. I'm intending to cover in this particular episode a couple of feature things. Uh, first is what I consider the Bible of panel design. Uh, and then I'm going to look at some of the research I've been doing uh, before just doing a quick preview of what I'll be looking to start to move towards throughout this series on this uh, little series of videos. So, the Bible. This is what I call the Bible. Uh, it's uh, the, the the website I will try and link in this tutorial. I've displayed it already, uh, and basically uh, all panels in uh, American-designed planes have to follow a certain uh, build standard. Uh, I don't know what the number is off the top of my head. It's not important off the top of my head, uh, but it's very useful for when we're designing our panels. And this document here I found on the internet through some good research is very useful. So just let's have a look about it. So the key thing about the panels is uh, De Zeus. And De Zeus is actually what I'm going to call my reference for when I'm designing the panels and I'm going to scale everything based on De Zeus. And De Zeus is the uh, scale that um, is, is used by military planes. So uh, we've got a lot of history about De Zeus and where it's come from. And it's really interesting things. The actual connections themselves are a type of quick connect uh, connection they use which only requires a half turn uh, probably for the purpose of designing a simpit panel this is overkill uh, and the actual uh, if we go through what a lot of people do is they use uh, m4 screws uh, a simple cheese head slotted and then you can machine the sort of shells here you can either machine them out of metal or you can uh, 3D print them, which is how I'm going to be doing it for my one. And the actual designs for these are quite readily available out there uh, through uh, file sharing sources and stuff. And you could always uh, mock, knock them up yourself if you wanted to. So useful information there. Uh, but here is where the real interesting uh, thing comes along. So the, there's a standard hole pattern for deuces, and that is basically every location is 6.48 millimeters apart of course it's actually imperial uh, imperial it's 0.255 inches and in all honesty I've always been brought up a metric system so I apologize I can't really work imperial uh, and basically uh, by using this standard you have your holes evenly spaced and then for your panel you can select how many you want it also drives uh, the actual everything about the panel so for instance the aluminum back plate uh, here, he, the, the, the author of this document, uh, and I'll highlight who this is again towards the end, uh, recommends for metric builders using a 1.5mm aluminium millennium backplate, uh, aluminum, if you're American, I think it's how they pronounce, you pronounce it. Uh, I'm going to use a 2mm on for my one, just purely for what's available, and I just like the idea of something that's a little bit more thick and a little bit more rigid. 1.5mm is probably more than enough. And then we go on to the actual dimensions of the panel itself. Uh, I'm going to look first at the width. The width is simple. The width is always uh, five and three quarter inches wide, or 146.05 millimeters. That is fixed, so that's easy. Now the height, uh, the height of the panel is actually linked to how much information is going on, how many switches, dials, etc. And this is actually based on a uh, it multiplications of three eighths of an inch, I believe, from what I can tell here. Uh, but I'll get into it, goes into a bit more detail about it here uh, further on. So, again, this is just showing the imperial versus metric height and just how that height relates to the whole distribution. Okay, and then here we've got a picture of how the entire aluminium plate would look. Um, I will say again, this is a Bible. I've actually printed this off and have it beside me whenever I'm doing any design work and I'm cross-referencing it all the time. Uh, so we can here see here the actual width of it. Or we can also see in this case, again, we're using uh, metric dimensions in this particular uh, drawing here, the actual dimension between the center points of the hole or also the where the diseases are mounted. In this case, uh, 136.525. And again, this number is fixed for whatever height of panel you've got it's always that width okay 
and then if we move down we talked it starts to talk about the acrylic plates and how they're designed uh, and it, it, I won't go into full details because you it's best to just read the document and understand it but this just shows how the acrylic plate is just that teeny bit smaller uh, point uh, 1.6 millimeters less width and height to it compared to uh, the aluminium base plate uh, and then as we move forward we've got to go and look at where the actual Zeus is mounted and we have the dimensions on how this is actually located and how it's actually modeled up in full and I'll, I'll try and cover this in a bit more detail in future uh, presentations uh, so here we go we got to the point where we can see the base plate aluminium with an acrylic topping and the Zeus holes here and as we move forward you can see he demonstrates it even further and then uh, just to highlight this is actually quite an old uh, document even as I speak uh, in uh, 2020 uh, this document's over 10 years old but it's still good and Hassel Houston probably butcher the name from the Netherlands brilliant work uh, and it is all his work and as he says he can't guarantee it's right but as far as I'm concerned it's a very useful document and uh, makes it very easy to scale what images you can get a hold of okay and then finally we've got a bit of a uh, appendium which is actually cr it crushes all the the important information so here again we confirm the width of the aluminium plate uh, and then here we have the actual dimensions on the height of the aluminium panels based on uh, the, uh, the the space of the Zeus count uh, and we can see this here and then we have the uh, width and height for the relevant acrylic and then the centers for the Zeus. so yeah like I've said this is key document uh, get a hold of it uh, print it out copy it understand it okay so that's the uh, the Bible as I call it so next thing I was going to talk about is uh, the research side of things and for that uh, we're gonna have a look at uh, the, 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 every part has a what we call a hole cut out and for that I'm gonna show you this document here and sorry let me just show this properly there we go yep so uh, as we can see in this document now in front of you this is the actual uh, switches I'm going to be using I, I'm using it from a company called switch electronics and they're very good they've, they've published all the specifications of their toggle switches and things uh, so this is useful information and depending on what you're doing you might you, you might need different cutouts but you'll need to do this research and find the relevant data for the switches buttons LEDs screens whatever you want you need to find out your cutout dimensions so uh, from this we can see this is the dimensions of the actual switch so if you go about modeling it up this is how you model it up and then you've got the actual cutout here which is saying it's a 12 millimeter cutout uh, I will go a little bit further in this because if you actually examine this specific cutout there is a there's a keying feature on it that's not demonstrated in this uh, particular drawing uh, but I was able to quite easily uh, ascertain what that is once I got my hands on the actual parts themselves and this part here you've highlighted here the actual labels on it which we, which I don't use for my actual panel it's got the cutout you need in it so it's quite useful for that so uh, yeah this is moving on to the research stage and research is key really uh, so if I look back here so if I next look at the uh, panel itself and like I said I'm going to be looking at the uh, fuel panel of the AVP Harrier now research locations uh, Google Pin interest really useful I'm doing it for a game called Digital Combat Simulator so DCS so in-game um, is again very useful but one important thing to understand about the in-game is it's, it's a representation and it doesn't necessarily mean it's correct uh, in the game in the game you will notice that this panel here the uh, fuel panel itself is above the external lights panel but if we look at the uh, image behind which is taken from a TAV 8B I believe it is the Spanish Harrier basically it's, it's the same plane but it's used by the Spanish and we can see that the fuel panel is actually below the external lights panel and this might well be different from plane to plane and it, it probably is because these panels are because these are standard sizing they, they can be interchanged um, but also if you look at the panel itself there are additional features 
uh, on the panel uh, we can see there's like little semicircles next to the dump switches which I suspect are to help prevent accidental dumping uh, and I will look at those in a bit of detail later on uh, and you can also see uh, the, in some cases you might well find that the whole pattern for the Dezeusers don't actually match up with reality on, in the game so um, I, I consider the Zeus to be the, the authority and uh, I defer to that in all cases. So final thing I'm going to look at today is I'm going to just have a quick look at what my aim is and uh, in all honesty this is a part I've already modelled up. Uh, we can see the uh, semi feet co uh, semi cone features around the dump switches which I observed on the actual Harry itself I've modelled up here. We can see the base aluminium plate with the Dezeuses uh, and we can see the acrylic plate and uh, you can see I've uh, etched in the uh, the lettering and such like with my intention to be to backlight it. So my intention is to slowly work work you through the steps I made to create this and I want to create a slight fresh one since I've slightly altered my uh, approach to things to allow improved machining uh, of the actual parts themselves. Specifically really it's more the, the location holes that mount the acrylic to the uh, plate. I'm going to standardize air position across all panels just so I can use a single, a simple fixturing on my CNC machine. And that's my objective. So I hope you found uh, this interesting and useful. Uh, you, if you want to, you can subscribe. Uh, this isn't this is uh, this isn't going to be a uh, monetization or anything. This is just me passing on knowledge. Uh, and uh, I'd apologize in advance if this hasn't been the most interesting display. It's and it's been more technical. I'm not a content creator as such I'm just trying to document what I'm doing and trying to maybe help others out there um, who wish to build their own simpit and wish to understand how to go about designing stuff so um, until next time uh, where we start looking at the actual aluminium base plate uh, I wish you all a good day uh, and uh, goodbye for now